Hello friends, A. K. Ramanujan is a great poet in our country and he was born in 1929 and died in 1993 and he has had a very distinguished career. First, we will see the historical and literary context, provide a brief life sketch of A. K. Ramanujan and then we will read three poems. One we will read just for the sake of understanding A. K. Ramanujan's own self portrait and then discuss two poems in detail looking for a cousin on a swing and a river. Finally, we will conclude with an overall impression and a summary. Let us see the historical and literary context. We deal with the post-independent India which became a youthful and energetic nation and one of the aspects of post-independent India we have to realize is the kind of divisions regionally and linguistically all the while growing as a great country. We have faced conflicts between tradition and modernity. Do we have to follow the old way of life or do we have to follow the new way of life offered by the West? We have this attraction of the western culture, science, individualism and all that and during this time we have had many well trained youth in India looking for opportunities abroad, many of them moved away. In the context of literature we found the development of modernism particularly through Pound and Moore, Marianne Moore and in the political scenario we have this cold war and area studies in the US. American government took interest in certain areas and they promoted area studies and one of the area studies Asian and Dravidian studies center received Ramanujan that is why we need to understand this relationship between cold war and area studies and how Ramanujan got into the US. We also have to see the growth of English as a medium of creative writing in our country after independence. This gave an opportunity for exploring both western and eastern traditions in our literature. Many poets started experimenting with poetry in English like Ezekiel, Damore, Kolatkar, Kamladas, we have of course Ramanujan and Mahapatra. Ramanujan was an extraordinary poet, a translator, a folklorist and a linguist. He was appreciated for his modernist poetic outlook with a deeper understanding of the past especially South Indian languages, literatures and cultures. He was widely recognized for his visual understanding and the expression of the world in his poems which he learnt from Marianne Moore and also from the ancient Tamil poets and Kannada poets. He received the Padma Sri award in 1976 and the MacArthur award in 1983. He has written four volumes three of which were published in his lifetime and the fourth one was published after his death. The Striders, Relations, Second Sight and the fourth volume is called The Black Hen which was included in the collected poems published in 1996. Some of the frequently anthologized poems of A. K. Ramanujan are Looking for a Cousin on a Swing, A River, Small Scale Reflections on a Great House. We have chosen three poems, one for reading and two for discussion. The first poem we want to read is Self Portrait, it is a nine line poem on the stranger within oneself. Then the poem that we want to discuss is Looking for a Cousin on a Swing, it is a 23 line poem on the nascent and mature dimensions of sexual awakenings. And then the second poem we have to discuss is A River. It is a 49 line poem on the glorious and guilty aspects of nature and culture especially poets in Tamil tradition and literature. All these three poems were published in the first volume The Striders in 1966. Let us see the self portrait now. I resemble everyone but myself and sometimes see in shop windows despite the well known laws of optics the portrait of a stranger date unknown often signed in a corner by my father. The whole question of this poem is what am I, who am I, it is about the identity of the speaker. We are an undated piece of painting by our own parents, father and mother, people are, we are strangers to ourselves when we analyze ourselves very closely particularly through artistic medium like poetry or painting. That is why this poem is very interesting for us to understand how A. K. Ramanujan migrating to the US was able to look at himself 
through the image of his father and finally see himself as a stranger within himself. Let us see this poem looking for a cousin on a swing now. When she was four or five, she sat on a village swing and her cousin six or seven sat himself against her. With every lunge of the swing, she felt him in the lunging pit suffer failing and afterwards we climbed a tree, she said. Not very tall, but full of leaves like those of a fig tree and we were very innocent about it. Now she looks for a swing in cities with 15 suburbs and tries to be innocent about it. Not only on the crotch of a tree that looked as if it would burst under every leaf into a brood of scarlet figs if someone suddenly sneezed. When we come to the thematic contrast, we can see the contrast between past and present, the young and the old, the girl or woman and boy and man, village and city, innocence and experience, nature and culture, growth and decay, pleasure and pain, boredom and meaning, fear and freedom, individual behavior and social norm. How children were growing up in nature in villages and how adults are growing up in cities, corrupt cities that is where we have this innocence and corruption or experience. Both have similar dimensions about the awakenings within oneself in the body, how they feel about each other. We have a number of poetic devices in this poem, metaphor we have in she felt him in the lunging pits of her feeling, then another metaphor in and afterwards we climbed a tree, she said. Similarly in but full of leaves like those of a fig tree, we also have something like an allusion to the fig tree here to the Bible Adam and Eve, the kind of awakening that came between Adam and Eve after eating this apple. We have a metaphor in now she looks for a swing in cities with 15 suburbs. Another metaphor in not only on the crotch of a tree that looked as if it would burst under every leaf into a brood of scarlet figs. We have irony in this poem, it is all about the experience and tries to be innocent about it. We do something not innocent, but people feel about it. Then we have repetition in the words swing and innocent. We also have a pun on lunge, swing, crotch, brood, scarlet. These words are transposed from one context to another that is where we have this pun and also the kind of sexual meanings which are hidden in the poem, some of which will appear obviously, some others we have to dig deeper into. Let us see the rhyme, rhythm and meter. This is a poem in free verse and some words are repeated and that is why we have some kind of rhyme in swing and innocent. We have this conversational speech pattern which is like iambic where we have this a little story, we can say that this is actually a cute Indian story of Adam and Eve similar to the biblical Adam and Eve. When we come to meter, we can say that the meter of this poem is polymetrical because the line length varies from 3 syllables to 8 syllables, mono, di, tri and tetrameter. We have cesurai, enjambment and end stop line in this poem. Let us see the extract we have. When she was 4 or 5, she sat on a village swing and her cousin 6 or 7 sat himself against her. So, 3 feet and 4 feet and this kind of alteration we have in this particular extract. This overall impression will give us an understanding of this poem much better. This is a lyrical poem of love, longing and lust at different stages of human life from childhood chance encounters to serious and meaningless adult engagements. The speaker narrates the innocent experience of a swing between cousins from the age of 4 to 7. The swing continues behind the thick foliage of the fig tree, but the participants pretend to be innocent about the affair. The clever play of shifting voices from male to female to male is a comment by itself on the collusion between male and female. When the grown up cousin looks for such swings in cities, the problem of propriety arises particularly after marriage. The poem is full of sexual imagery with psychoanalytical symbolism in which Ramanujan was seriously interested to understand human behaviors and cultures. 
actually when poets write poems they want to understand themselves they want to understand the society they want to pass on their understanding to the posterity it's a quest for the meaning of life let's move on to the second poem a river which we have given in different slides in different sections in madurai city of temples and poets who sang of cities and temples every summer a river dries to a trickle in the sand bearing the sand ribs straw and women's hair clogging the water gates at the rusty bars and the bridges with patches of repair all over them the wet stones and glistening like sleepy crocodiles the dry ones shaven water buffaloes lounging in the sun the poets only sang of the floods he was there for a day when they had the floods people everywhere talked of the inches rising of the precise number of cobbled steps run over by the water rising on the bathing places and the way it carried of three village houses one pregnant woman and a couple of cows named gopi and brinda as usual the new poet still quoted the old poets but no one spoke in verse of the pregnant woman drowned with perhaps twins in her kicking at blank walls even before birth he said the river has water enough to be poetic about only once a year and then it carries away in the first half hour three village houses a couple of cows named gopi and brinda and one pregnant woman expecting identical twins with no moles on their bodies with different colored diapers to tell them apart the design of the printed page is crucial for ramanujan's poetry we have for example the line to tell them apart separately printed which is noticeable in this poem spacing lines or words line lengths everything matters in ramanujan's poetry and many poets for that matter let's see the thematic contrast now between city and village summer and rainy seasons wet stones and dry stones human beings and animals old and new poets birth and death similarity and difference ordinary normal and poetic expressions or life we have the river here and the name of the river is the vaigai river which flows once a year and brings water and life and also death the river of life and death that's what we find in this poem but the poets sing of the river partially they don't have a complete picture they forget about the pregnant woman or the three village houses or the animals that is the cows brinda and gopi we have some poetic devices in this poem the metaphor we can see in bearing sand ribs like a human body the ribs are open then we can see the simile the wet stones glistening like sleepy crocodiles the stone on the river bed that is like sleepy crocodiles then we have the dry ones shaven water buffaloes lounging in the sand then the whole poem is about irony the old and new poets singing about the river but not mentioning anything about the pregnant woman with twins or the cows floating in the floods this is a partial picture poetry should not be partial it should be able to cover up the entire vision the poetry is inclusive that's what ak ramanujan is trying to convey through this poem when we come to rhyme rhythm and meter we see that this poem is written in free verse rhyme we can see in the repetitions of the same words at the end to denote some kind of rhyme floods woman rising birth cows these words are repeated so that we can have some kind of rhyme and the rhythm of this poem is somewhat casual it is something like we can say river rhyme there is a kind of flow that's why we say river rhyme then the meter is predominantly iambic trimeter although line number varies from one to another so in one line we have 3 feet and another line we have just 1 foot and in some lines we have 3 plus feet that means one extra syllable will be there so let's see the extract we have here the new poets still quoted the old poets but no one spoke in verse of the pregnant woman drowned with perhaps twins in her that's where we have some kind of imagination of the poet just not the pregnant woman not just only one child there may be two children as well 
to give an overall impression of this poem, let us look at the points here. The context of the poem is the old and the new poets of Madurai, the famed seat of Tamil literature and culture singing the glory of the river Vaigai. As a visitor observes, the river is usually dry during the summer, but when it floods, it carries villages, women and cows and destroys them. The speaker sadly notes that both old and new poets are apathetic to human suffering, especially the pregnant women with twins and also the cows. The images of the sand rapes, crocodiles and shaven buffaloes to describe the river bed are evocative and offer a sharply ironic view of the furious river and the indifferent poets. The environmental impact of the city dwellers on the river reveals that humans have lost their sense of humanity. The zigzag lines with the repetitions of floods, women, birth and cows indicate the fury of the river and of the speaker as well about the sufferings of humanity which are not fully expressed in poetry. To summarize A.K. Ramanujan's poems that we have discussed. We saw the historical and literary context in which A.K. Ramanujan wrote his poetry. He was born in India, studied here, took interest in poetry, but went to US for study, settled there and wrote poems and also involved himself in translations and other research activities. We discussed two poems primarily, but we also read self-portrait to understand the kind of poet he was, how he felt about his father, how he felt about himself. And then we saw his two poems, Looking for a Cousin on a Swing and a River. While Looking for a Cousin on a Swing talks about the sexual awakenings in a boy and a girl, the river talks about some kind of social awakening which was not understood by poets in the past and also in the present. And it takes a poet like A.K. Ramanujan to go to US, America, live there for some time, come back here, see the river, read the literature and then see how we have been apathetic to our own human suffering. We analyzed uh, two poems linguistically, poetically, rhetorically and gave our own overall impressions. We have a beautiful quotation from A.K. Ramanujan's recent book, Journeys, A Poet's Diaries. It is fantastic to see. This is something that normally we do not notice in our writers. He kept some diaries throughout his life and these diaries have been put together under the title Journeys, A Poet's Diaries and published in 2019. And here we have one line like this, everything comes to him who waits. Remember Nizim Ezekiel, the best poets wait for words, the best readers wait for best poems. Let us see the references now. Here are some, hope you will be able to see at least one or two and expand your own understanding of A.K. Ramanujan. Thank you.